Hello, I'm back to do another one of these kind of talk thingies with high energy and little to no structure at all. And today I actually have good news to talk about. And obviously it's been many, 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 many days since this actually happened. But I'm still going to do it anyway because um, I set myself a goal to do every single Premier League game. I kind of want to do other Premier League games, not just Southampton. If it's like a big derby game or something like that, I can review that. But we'll see what happens how the season goes, maybe even do cup, cup game for Saints, I don't know, but I've missed, I've missed like one of those um, so far, so uh, yeah, go me, anyway, so uh, let's start this off, so Southampton beat Crystal Palace 2-0 away, oh my god, it's amazing, Southampton are winning a game and it's an away game, which is kind of shit, because I went to go and watch them at home in a game we should have won and we lost, <laughs> um, so it seems to be that um, I should go to an away game. Uh, or maybe not, because I might be the unlucky charm here. Anyway, yeah, Saints come off the bat off. Uh, the, that didn't make any sense. <laughs> it didn't make any uh, English sense whatsoever. But in, uh, Samson have just won a match in the Cup against Brighton away. Let's just mention that. Uh, won 1-0, very, very last minute, I'll have to say. Charlie Austin with a, an okay-ish header, I guess, from a fantastic uh, Nathan Redmond run and cross. Uh, so spirits were high going into this game. We really felt like Southampton could do bits with this match and from the off it looked like we definitely could. Uh, there were no goals inside the first half but what we did see was a fantastic array of football. None of it in the box but a lot of it in the opponent's half. Uh, Crystal Palace had to sit back really 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 deep and watching Huivier and Lamina tear apart the middle of the park with some insane crossfield balls, some brilliant passing, just time, taking your time. And that's something that we really need to see in Southampton more. Not playing it around the back so much, but playing it through the middle and taking our time in midfield. And that's like been been amazing in the past few games. And it's good to see Lamina come out of his shell and then have a fantastic game. But Hoybier as well, who played fantastically well uh, against... Leicester and then got sent off for, for a shitty stupid dive. I'm glad he's back and he's still playing well and um, he definitely deserved um, his goal later in the game. But we're not going to talk about that now. We're going to talk about the game um, and the stuff that happened in no particular order. So a lot of people are saying that their man of the match for the game was Alex McCarthy. From the, from the, the match that I watched uh, and the commentary that I watched, everyone seemed to be kissing Palace's ass. And I, I don't want to dwell on this for too long, but I feel like, what? Why? Why do you have to be such a, a snarky commentary team to be biased to Crystal Palace when it's not even two big teams? You know, it's Crystal Palace, Palace and Southampton. I don't know why they were being so biased. Like, anything that Southampton did, it was a... Uh, Oh, cool! Look at look at that for a pass. Wow, that's that's really fantastic. And I think the Crystal Palace did it was oh look at that! Look at Macarthur. Macarthur is amazing. Macarthur did have a good game, yes. But Southampton played so much better. But basically, all of their players played better than Macarthur, bar a couple who didn't really see much of the ball. Who I'd like to name Cedric. Like he just didn't see much. El Yunusi didn't see much. But that's just how it goes sometimes. We sometimes have a strong wing, and our wing is the left wing. Um, but yeah, I felt that the commentary team were really really biased towards Palace. Whenever Saints did anything uh, badly, they were sure to pick up on it. When Hoybier shouted about a foul he thought was a foul, they ripped into him and saying how it was akin to his dive the follow the previous week, which I think is ridiculous. And I just felt it was a bit biased. And I don't know if that's the same on all commentary teams' uh, sides because I haven't watched the match today, um, review of the match, but I'll have to go back and watch that, obviously. Anyway, let's not dwell on that. Let's dwell on the game. A lot of people say it's uh, Alex McCarthy, who did have a fantastic game. He didn't actually have much to do uh, because Palace seemed all over the place up front. They did actually didn't have Zaha, which I, I feel if they had Zaha, we would have had a much bigger challenge. We definitely would have conceded. Benteke just doesn't seem comfortable at all. He had so many chances. He didn't do anything. And albeit McCarthy did some good saves, but there weren't many good shots to, to save. So, um, yeah, he may deserve man of the match. My man of the match would actually be Hoybier. I think he was fantastic in the middle of the park. Uh, but he, yeah, he did well. And he, he deserved his England call-up. Maybe the England call-up did boost the, his morale. Made him do an, an amazing save against Benteke towards the end. Um, and and yeah, I was, I was really proud of him. And I, I have always rated him as a keeper. Since he came in uh, to replace Forster um, last season, he's just been our best. Like He has been our most consistently good 
player and um, I love him to pieces and I really, 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 really hope that he sticks around for a bit and that he does well for England if he gets to play anything. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, like I say, nothing really happened in the first half. This video probably won't be much longer from now. It's just me saying about how it was really stressful <laughs> and I was biting my nails to pieces and my dad had to leave because he was too stressed that we were going to uh, concede. But um, Danny Ings scored... Um, right in the start of the first half, uh, the second half. It was brilliant. Uh, it came out of nowhere. Um, I don't know how the ball managed to get all the way to Ings. Um, I don't know if Long um, put off the defender by um, like getting injured as the ball's passing over him. I don't really know what happened. I haven't looked in great detail. But I know that Long's injured from international duty and he, had, he did take a couple of knocks in the game and he did look kind of worse for wear towards the end. So hope, I'm hoping he'll be okay for our next game because he did play well and he's just constantly running and running and running and creating these spaces. Um, but yeah, he, he ducked and that must have put the defender off or something, but it must have run all the way through to Ings. It was just a brilliant finish. It was an, a, not a, an easy thing to do when you've got the keeper running out of you and just to calmly poke it into the middle of the goal. It didn't even go to any of the corners. He just needed to get it on target, and that's exactly what he did. So fair play to Ings. That's his second goal in two away matches. He's looking brilliant, brilliant. and I'm really, really excited to see how well he does this season. Definitely, Definitely one of our best signings we've, we've had. He, I'm hoping he does as well as Gabby Adini did when he first signed, and then goes on to do even more than Gabby Adini's done. Uh, so I'm excited for Ings. Anyway, then <laughs> the rest of the second half, um, we were kind of under the, the, the foot a little bit. Um, Chris Palace seemed really uh, promising going forward. MacArthur hit the bar with a really good shot. I felt like he probably deserved to score, but aside from that, Chris Palace didn't really do anything. anything. Our defence looked really solid. Vestergaard played well. Hoot played really well for once. Bertrand, again, you can't fault him. Cedric did some like some stuff, I guess. And our midfielders are just tracking back and doing amazing defending. This entire game has been absolutely amazing having them. Then we got a penalty with a handball. And um, I know you're thinking, give it to Charlie Austin. He's a, yeah, he's a, he's a goal scorer. Um, he'll do bits. He'll score. But he's not, he, he hasn't looked like a man with confidence for a while. And um, the penalty was really poor. And personally, I'd like to see someone like Bertrand on penalty. He can take penalties. He's really good at penalties. We've seen in previous seasons. Um, I'd like to see Bertrand on penalties. That's my my opinion. I feel like he's a person they might not expect when you got people like Austin in their team. The keeper might be a bit unprepared for maybe. Um, so when Austin missed the penalty, I was very very nervous <laughs> <laughs> because yeah we were one 0 We could have easily had it at two 0 but the penalty was just poor and I got a fault Austin uh, because he. Definitely should have just buried it because it wasn't even a, he wasn't it wasn't powerful it wasn't in a good position um, the keeper comfortably saved so I got very cross with that and then we're completely on the back foot everything's going Crystal Palace's way they just had so much pressure they pressed so high but our defensive line just somehow managed to uh, keep them at bay and did some really really important just hoofs out uh, then Benteke somehow misses from like. What's it's from the penalty spot, I guess, with McCarthy doing an incredible save with his feet. I don't even know how he managed to do that. He was mid-air and yet still managed to get his feet low enough to stop that header. It was amazing. It was just absolutely amazing. And then we come to the end where, where we've been hoofing it out pretty much any defensive chance we have. And then the one time um, it's Wesley who, who just loves to hoof <laughs> in the last minute, decides instead he's going to play the ball out to Matt Target. And oh my God. Have you ever seen Hoybier move that fast? I didn't know he was pasty. But when Target played the ball across to him, the ball was a bit closer to the defender, so he couldn't quite get there in time. He just gunned it, and I don't know where that pace came from. But he did fantastically well. He managed to get in front of the defender. And seriously, where is that? where was that Hoybier last week when he, he dived? He could have done a shot like that, and he could have scored. Why wasn't he like that last week? But I'm really glad he got a goal, because... He definitely he deserved it. It was a good finish, really confident, managed to get around the defender, as I say, and then get it over the keeper uh, with his weak foot, uh, with his socks around his ankles as well. So he, he did a fantastic job, and I'm, I'm really, really happy for him. And um, more so, I'm happy that we managed to get our first win of the season. It's an away uh, win against Crystal Palace, which isn't an easy thing to do. Crystal Palace have been playing well. I know their results don't look like they have been, but they actually have been playing well. And like I say, without Zaha... They just seemed a little bit vulnerable, and I'm luck we're lucky for that. But it was a good game, um, so I'm really looking forward. I think we played fantastically well.
like I keep saying fantastically well, but I really think Saints played well. Like, really good. And for the last few games, we've looked like playing an exciting, attacking uh, way of football, at least for part of the game. Uh, hopefully we can keep it up, uh, where in a couple of weeks we're going to be facing Brighton again uh, at home this time. So we'll have to see if... I mean, we beat them in the Cup with our not-strongest squad, albeit they probably didn't play their strongest squad either, but um, it'd be nice to see us get a win in the league as well against them and at home, get a first home win, get the fans on our side once again, and um, hopefully things will move up from there. But until then, we've got an international break. Maybe I'll do the England games on this kind of format. Who knows? But I'll wrap it up for now. I hope you've enjoyed this kind of video. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that shit's wild. And I'll see you guys uh, for the next match that I... I watch. If you want to know where I actually am most of the time when I don't do these videos, I daily vlog. Yeah, it's in my, my channels. I don't know if it's in the description. I probably will forget to put it there. But if you go through my channel, you find it's called Rob Vlog, and I do daily videos, and, and they're not boring. No one watches them, but they're there. So it's kind of like my diary. Instead of writing things down, I film my day, and that's how I know what I did uh, around about. So if you want to check that out, then go check that out. If not, that's fine. But I'll see you guys next time for one of these footy videos where hopefully Southampton or England have won. So see you then. Bye. Why? Lol.